In recent years, uh, much public attention has focused on three phenomena. Um, Australia's deteriorating productivity performance, our record but now falling terms of trade, and the ageing of our population. More recently, the new government has also focused discussion on Australia's fiscal position. Australia faces Not challenges, but if we get the policy settings right, we also stand to benefit from three waves of opportunities. First, we've just seen the peak of a historic boom in mining investment. While mining investment will fall and fall sharply over coming years, and employment levels in the mining sector will become lower, we will see rising exports over coming years as the huge investment wave that we've just, have, uh, just had comes online. Second, uh, we are seeing rising demand for high quality agricultural products from Asia. But to benefit fully from that, we need the right policy framework and to be open to foreign investment in agriculture and food manufacturing. Third, we need to position ourselves to compete for the opportunities in the services and high value added manufacturing <coughs> sectors that will come from the growth of the Asian middle class from two point, uh, sorry, from 0.5 of uh, a billion, so half a billion people in 2009 to 3.2 billion by 2030. However, we need to be really clear eyed about this. That mining wave of opportunity and the agriculture and food manufacturing wave of opportunity are areas in which we have a natural advantage. When we think about um, services and manufacturers, it's not clear that we have the same natural advantage uh, in, in those areas. What we'll have to do is to work hard to uh, reap those opportunities. Now, contrary to how it's sometimes portrayed, competing on the global stage for those opportunities does not mean driving down wages or trading off our living standards. Far from it. Being globally competitive means investing in the skills of our workforce so that Australians have the opportunity to move into sustainably higher paid jobs. It means investing in infrastructure with a high economic return. It means ensuring that firms are freed from unnecessary regulatory burdens and it means having the right incentives in place to encourage innovation and competition. In other words, it means raising Australia's productivity growth performance.